here are the rules. And I'm going to iterate the rules through for the first six generations. So you can see after the fourth, we get pi again, but then five and six. I think it's pretty likely that you'll have seen the Sapinski carpet before, but I doubt that you've seen the Halfman carpet before. I'm going to show you how these two fractals are related, and then I'll play around with them and do some other cool things. The, the Wolfram Mathworld article mentioned this thing called string rewriting, which is the idea that we, we start with a really simple string, and then we have some rules that tell us how to go from one string to another. And the rules are of the form, if the string has the number one, replace it with zero, one, zero, or something like this. In this case, we're gonna talk about strings being just blocks of color. So the Sapinski carpet, for example, that's a string rewriting fractal. You can start with one black square, and the rules are, if you've got a black square, replace it by nine more squares. Eight of them are black and white in the middle. And if you've got a white square, replace it with nine white squares. You do this again and again, and you get back to the famous Sapinski carpet that we know and love. It won't surprise you then to find out that the Hafferman carpet is, is formed in much the same way, otherwise I probably wouldn't be making this video, right? The rules are slightly different. They're a tiny bit more complicated, but, but really not all that much. So we again start with a black square, but this time if we see a black square, we replace it with this pattern of nine squares. And if we see a white square, we re replace it with this pattern. So the first few iterations look like this. You can see that it's intensely beautiful, but really, so simple to define. That's not all we can do. The, the, the examples we've chosen so far have had quite simple rules of the form, replace a black pixel with these things. But the things we've replaced them with have always been symmetric. So what happens if we replace them with non-symmetric things? Well, here's one example of a rule. We'll replace black with this thing and white with this thing. And we produce this amazing chaotic fractal again with such simple rules. There are lots and lots of examples like this. In fact, you could turn this into a doodle game, right? A random rule for white start with a random colour and then just go, right? You get to draw a doodle, it'll be hours of fun. I mean, there are what? Two to the nine ways of choosing the first rule, two to the nine more ways of choosing the next rule, two ways of choosing the first colour. So what's that? Two to the 19 different possible outcomes, a little over 524,000. So if you played this for a thousand times a day, then you'd be done in a little under two years. That's not quite right, of course, because some of them are rotations of other rules or some of them are reflections and some of them are just boring. For example, ones that replace black with black and you just live in a, a, a completely black image for the whole game. So maybe you get bored of this within a few months. So, so what can we do to make it more interesting? Well, a few things spring to mind. Firstly, the choice of rules being three by three was completely arbitrary. Why don't we replace pixels by two by two blocks or four by four blocks? Or, I mean, why is it even a square, right? Why don't we replace it by a five by eight rectangle or anything you want. Secondly, why have we only got two colours, black and white? They're like the most boring colours. Why, why can't we choose some more interesting colours or more colours? So the first thing I looked at was what happens if we change the size of, of our rules. And I went down to two by two. It turns out there aren't really all that many options. There are about 512 different configurations. So I asked my computer really nicely if it would produce some pictures for me, and it did. And, and some of them were really beautiful. There's one that looks like the Sapinski triangle, which you might like to try and find. There are quite a few that look like the Sapinski triangle. But my favorite by far was this one, and it's generated by these two really simple rules. But you'll see that it's just astonishingly beautiful to say that it's, it consists at its core of just these two pictures. I also had a look at what images we can generate with four by four fractals, but they turn out to be quite hard to deal with, mostly because the pictures grow really, really quickly. At every iteration, your picture grows by a factor of 16. And well, it's not very much fun to have a massive image. You have to zoom in to see any of the details, especially in black and white, because everything just looks gray before you've zoomed in. So I didn't really get very far with that. But I did get quite far with thinking about colors, and I want to share some, some of that with you. So if, if we've already talked about having two colors, then the most natural thing is to talk about three colors. I found two really interesting patterns, I think, with three colors. It's actually quite hard to find these patterns because you have an awful lot of choices, but most of them just look awful. So I'd like to share this one with you first. I call it the cross for obvious reasons, right? And it's generated by these three rules. I. From now on, I'm going to be showing just this one small pixel and then these three boxes below. That'll become apparent why later, because I'm going to have many more rules. And you can see that the first few iterations are sort of flying by uh, to my right. I also found one other image that I, that I really like, which is which to me resembles another carpet. And given that Sapinski and Hafferman have their own carpets, I might be narcissistic enough to claim it as my own, the Hodkinson carpet or something. And here you can see, I, th I, I genuinely would have this on my floor. I think it looks amazing. I was playing around with these quite a lot 
making lots of doodles. I was looking around, I can't find any with me at the moment, but I, I made lots of doodles and it was, it was quite hard to, to find things that look interesting, but once you do, they're really beautiful. So it, it begged the question, can I draw anything? like this and that isn't at all obvious to start with you think well when you when you're talking about these rules they're they're highly structured right they kind of look like fractals i mean they are fractals so they're very self-similar so if i wanted to draw a picture of a face i might struggle with that but there's a really clever idea which is to use lots of colors basically but to use colors to just mark where in the image you are so say we start with a black pixel and then we replace a black pixel with this collection of nine pixels all nine new colors. Then the red at the top left there. I can write a rule for red at the top left which uses new colors again, which depends on being in the top left corner of the image. Do the same with all the others and never reuse a color until say the final stage. In this way I could draw any picture of any size. It would just use an awful lot of colors. For example, if I wanted to draw a picture using say a three by three rule again, and going down to four iterations. So I'd end up with a picture that was 81 by 81. To do that, I'd have to start with one black color, and then I'd have to use another three to the four, and then on the next stage, another three to the six. On the last stage, I could use anywhere from one color to three to the eight, depending on how complicated the image was. So as an upper band, the number of colors I'd need would be one plus three squared plus three to the eight. Now that's uh, that's about 7,800, which is nice, I guess, but I, if you're gonna use that many colors, you might as well just write down a list of coordinates and the colors because you're not really saving any space with this, right? So somehow the original question was wrong. The, the question shouldn't have been, can I draw pictures, but can I draw pictures in a reasonable number of colors? And this is the question that I explored. It turns out the answer is yes, and I managed to draw a picture, which I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, with 30 colors, which is a big number, but it's an awful lot less than 7,800. The reason I chose 30 was it seemed like 10, 15, 20 just weren't quite enough to get the level of non-symmetry that I wanted. But 30 was also a reasonable amount of numbers to work with. Having said that, I found it quite difficult to write down the patterns earlier just with three colours. It was very hard to, to produce something that looked like what I wanted it to look like. So I can't do this by hand. Is there a middle ground? Is there a way that I can leverage the computer to do some calculations for me, but in an intelligent manner? And the answer is yes. I used an algorithm based on evolution, a genetic algorithm, which in my mind, I, I feel like they've gone out of fashion in recent years when neural nets have become popular, but I think it's a great shame because they're really beautiful algorithms. They're very simple to understand, which is something that can't be said of neural nets. They work like this. You start with some completely random population and you see which of that population are good at doing the thing you want them to do. And in like in real life, the ones that are bad at it, you kill off. And then you take the best ones and you breed them together to produce new offspring, which have some of the traits of the parents, but new ones as well and some random mutations. So I used this idea to generate this picture. Now, I wanted to approximate pi for obvious reasons. So I started with 2000 sets of rules, which is a very small number compared to the total number of possible rules. And I w worked them all through four generations and saw what happened. And this was the best one. Pretty rubbish, right? Still, I took the best 15 and interbred them uh, and produced 500 more. I threw in some random mutations as well and some completely random new things just because otherwise you can get stuck in these cycles where maybe the key ingredient that you need it just isn't in the mix. I, I did that again and here's what it looked like after 50 generations. Not much better, but you can kind of see like a dark shadow of a pie starting to appear. 500 generations, this is what it looked like. And, and really... It looks like, it really does look like pie to me. This took about two minutes, three minutes, and I checked about 250,000 sets of rules. Fast forward a few more minutes and we get to generation 5,000 and it looks like this, which is pretty good, right? From now on, I think I'll just have them flip forward on, on my right so you can see what, what happened. Remember, the picture here is changing, but that's not what the algorithm is changing. The algorithm is changing the rule set. And that in turn changes the picture. It would be easy to program a neural net just to change the picture. That, that would converge very rapidly on a solution. The complexity here is we're changing the rules and then it has to iterate four times to get this picture. It's slightly more complicated as well because you might think naively, okay, what we'll do is we'll divide the picture up into three by three blocks and we'll just work like that. But then as soon as you go back a generation, you have to use the blocks that you've already defined to define the previous generation and that just messes everything up. So it's very hard to find an actual algorithm for constructing these without working with these genetic algorithms. So every time things mutate, a few things can happen. Between two sets of rules, you choose a random selection of rules from each one. And then maybe you swap a couple around because perhaps 
we've drawn a perfect picture of pi, but we've happened to draw it in white on a blue background, but we want a blue on a white background. It'd be a real shame if we had to start from scratch, or worse, if that was deemed worse than completely gray image. So inbuilt in this mutation is this, this swapping idea of completely swapping colors around. You'll see we're up to about generation 25,000 now, and things look pretty good. I'm, I'm inclined to be be quite happy. I let this run for about three hours and I eventually stopped it at generation 75,000. And that's what this looked like. And you can see, here are the rules. And I'm going to iterate the rules through for the first six generations. So you can see after the fourth, we get pi again, but then five and six look new again. And if we go on to eight, we're going to end up with lots and lots and lots of little pies. Because we started with one dark square. And in the pie, we have lots of dark squares. And we can keep going forever. And we've now got a fractal pie. Well, thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And please subscribe for more because I love doing this sort of thing. And there will be more coming.